What's going on, Ed? Bro? Up, bro? How you feel? Good. Alright, uh, that's what's up, man. Where we at right now, man? Yeah, we in West Philly right now. Big West Side. <laughs> Ant Brown, man, tell the people who you are, man. Uh, my name is Ant Brown. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a youth mentor and youth engagement strategist. Uh, I move and shake all around the city. Uh, anything that helps the youth, I'm there trying to provide either the programming or the resources. Uh, more so, man, I just want to connect with the people. Well, all right, so listen, man, why don't you tell us about yourself, where you from, and what inspired you? What inspired you to work on this gun violence prevention? So I'm originally from South Philadelphia. I'm from 31st and Tasman. I was born and raised there until I was like 12. And I moved over there to West Philly. And I was living over there around 58th and Webster. Um, uh, I was back and forth uh, from my mom, my grandma's house, you know, just bouncing around the city. And um, I lost a brother to gun violence when I was young. Mm. It didn't really start to affect me until I was like 18, 19, which I'm 27 now. So, um, and why I say that is because, you know, I grew up, it was like a good, solid 12 of us. Like, that was my homie, solid 12. And then, one by one, they was getting knocked off from gun violence okay. you know, over time. And then it kind of made me realize, like, I didn't know how to process it. So, when I realized that, I realized, like, yo, I never processed from when my brother died. You know, my brother got killed. So, it kind of gave me this, this drive to, like... To start, to start trying to prevent it from happening because I remember how I felt emotionally. It sent my mom back in a relapse on drugs, you know. Grew up, um, she grew up on crack like my whole life. I was a crack baby. And um, and I just remember like how it made her feel, that hole that it put in my family, then losing my friends, and then I'm their mom and just seeing them cry, like took me back to when my, you know, seeing my mom cry, stuff like that. And then, you know, I learned like I had something unique where I was connecting to young people and stuff. Seeing some of these young people, their minds start to change as I've been consistent with them. I'm like, tag, I'm doing work because I got two kids myself. And if I wasn't there for my son, I would want somebody similar to me to be pre preaching these same messages to them. So that's what got me into this work, man. Just what I've been through and just, and still to this day, you know, just keep finding out about new people that I know that, that, that lost their life to gun violence and give me that drive to go even harder. And that's what got me into the work, just being a, just being a byproduct of that. Just First hand seeing how that destroy and put a big hole in the family, I'm like, man, I gotta do something. Like, I ain't out here trying to, you know, let me be clear, I'm not, I, I don't think jail is the answer either. I think this is a lot of social emotional trauma. Like, right. so I think it's like if you get into the households and we start figuring out workshops for the households, and this is why I do my work in the school because I get to intervene in a place where they where, where they being educated, where they in the learn of, they in a mode of learning or what they say, you know, the school district a little messed up. But this is why I try to like intervene, you know, like, yo, look, everything gonna be cool. There's programming, there's help. There's these different things out here. The reason you so fascinated with the gun violence might be because of this, this, and that. The reason that you so cold hearted is not that you an animal, it's because you went through this, this, and that. You never cope with your trauma. So that's why I do this work, bro. You know, um, you stated a few things, right? You stated that your mother was on drugs, right? And you were born into that. While she, so she was using drugs while you were inside the womb, right? Your brother got shot. You lost so many friends. I can understand why it will cause you to say, you know what, I want to do something different. Your program, what's the name of your program? So my organization is called your organization. A, a Bro Inc. It's a nonprofit. We are a creative arts initiative. Our mission is to service the inner city youth and educate them through entertainment. One of the programs we run is the A Bro Rap Choir, mm -hmm. and we teach the power of teamwork and unity through the recitation of positive rap lyrics, because I believe we can use positive words to reprogram these kids' minds. The other one is the Outreach 215 program. This is specifically where we go from rec center to rec center, block by block, park by park, and intervene with young people who might be affected by gun violence, providing them resources. You know, we feed them, we talk to them, and more so we give them tips on how to stay safe throughout the summer, like how to identify when you, you know, when you go to a party, you might not want to stay to the let out. It's right. cool to leave one hour early, like stuff right. like that. Our third program is the April Experience. That's a high school and middle school tour where we bring different anti-gun violence workshops to schools and different entrepreneurs, and we just try to change their minds. So all three of those go hand in hand with the gun violence and stuff that we do. Um, what are some of the barriers that you may have came across while building this program or 
while you know you know pursuing pursuing your program and your dreams inside of your program so some of the barriers that I went through was of course um, lack of information like nobody really taught me how to start a nonprofit start a movement and be effective with it everybody kind of tried to just pull me into their nonprofit to kind of do the work with for them or mm. like add my expertise or my influence to their nonprofit nobody right. really gave me the gems on how to start organize it and structure it so that's a barrier Two, you know to go for them grants you know I realized that even with grants you know I know people still waiting for grants nowadays but getting that funding is hard um, but the most important barrier I say is trying to not get too emotionally attached to young people uh, who went through the same things that you went through, meaning I'm a father now. So some of these kids, at first they're my mentees, now I feel like they my children. And I feel like they my little, actual little brothers and sisters. So when one come in the classroom and one not feeling right, you can identify it. And then you like, you cool? And you know, my dad just got killed. And you, you know, you want to break down in tears. You know what I'm saying? Or you don't really know the right things to say in that moment, right? So with that being said, what gives you the hope to say, yo, listen, one day we're gonna, we're gonna, we got the cure, or you got the cure for gun violence. You know, like what gives you that hope? So what gives me the hope is when I meet other people that's doing this work, I realize I'm not the cure. I don't think any one person is the cure. However, it takes a big collective, you know, and once I run into multiple people who's doing this work from a sincere place and using this, why I connect, this is why I connect with you so much using a voice, they creativity. You feel what I'm saying? All of your videos are curriculums that's gonna reach these kids and open up these conversations in a way that they won't get from just a textbook. You get right. what I'm saying? The creatives are stepping up now in this work. The creatives are now the engineers of the community. Like, and this is why like sometimes it's not always about your degree. However, you gotta partner with people who have those, those expertise and those degrees to be able to add the extra sauce that you need. But the fact that the, the, the influencers, the people that these kids are watching and starting to step up, the creatives, that gives me hope because I'm like, I'm not in it alone. When you envision a better Philadelphia, right? Your vision of Philadelphia being it, mm-hmm. great, man, low violence, it's just a better Philadelphia. What does that look like to you? The black community practicing group economics. Mm. Like they actually coming together besides just meeting, like they actually pitting plays and they, they're bringing, they're coming together with LLCs, like they really collaborating. Um, of course, no gun violence. The block captains, you can't be a block captain unless you are fully engaged with your, your block. There's some block captains who never come outside. I think that gotta change because it's about building your community back. Uh, I would see mandatory hood wide cookouts, no violence. All could like love, music, right. you get what I'm saying? I yeah. see I see mandatory financial literacy training from ages six on up. I see financial literacy training from ages six on up. Um, I would see I would see more big brother programs roaming the streets, more black men roaming the streets, more sis- sisterhoods roaming the streets. If you out here doing nothing, they're gonna grab you by your hand and say, look, I got you. What's on your horizon? for the summer, what's on your horizons for even the fall, right? Because that's right around the corner. Winter's right around the corner. What do you have planned for the summer, man? Because summer is here. What you got planned? So, specifically, I'm just focusing on uh, me and my rap choir and the step team we've been rehearsing. So we about to just create this wave and bring this art into the city, right? But what we gonna do is with my rap choir, right? I use that as a tool to teach young people the power of teamwork through the recitation of positive rap lyrics. Because I believe you can reprogram, reprogram the mind with, with hip hop. I believe if it's programming them, we can reprogram them. So what you'll see for me is we're going to be touching all different parts of the city, events, festivals, etc., making noise, right? But what I want to do with that is not just about us making noise. It's about showing other kids, like, look, you can do something positive. There's escape spaces right here, out here for you. So this summer, that's all my, my big focus is just getting my programming right there ready but um the outreach 215 program that i do with peace bengal 
we starting that back up in the summertime where okay. we're we going to be rec center to rec center, block party to block party, and engaging with these young people and just intervening. Now, with that being said, man, is it anything you want to tell them that we didn't talk about? Anything that you want to touch on? Whatever it is that you want to talk about, just drop your jewel, give them some. Um, you know, we can end let me it with see. that. I think I think the last but not least, you know, I gotta you always spit some bars. You, oh, you want? Oh man! I think I, spit some bars, <laughs> man. I think I think give them what you what you you say you like to give the positivity right. through the lyrics. Let's hear something. All right, so look. Nobody expected for me to come over the booth and hop on it the way I did. I'ma keep grinding and stacking this paper and shining like I got a hundred kids. All different kind of parts of the city. You see me like I got a hundred heads. One hundred haters don't wanna wake up to the fact that I'm great. That's a hundred bids. I got a vision. The mission is simple. The youth is Everest and we fixing the mental. Everything critical start with a thought, but critically thinking they something they into. I blame the generation that's before me for too many years been twisting the story, giving me allegories. What's more important, economics or building the army? I put the poverty in the curriculum. Me and the driver's seat leading the pack. Anyone following, seeing the pendulum swinging the salary, giving me that. I put the positivity in rap. I'm a rap of his activist. Lavish is fine. I hope by the end of these lines, you understand the true diamonds lie inside the mind. Woo! Yo. Yo, man, we appreciate you. We love you. Yo, Thank you, bro. No Thank problem, you, man. man. For sure. Let's go! Yo. <laughs>